from the News Center. In high definition, this is News Channel 7, on your side at 11. One of our reporters beaten while trying to report the news. Tonight, she says it's what her attackers said that hurt more than the punches. Thanks for being with us. Chaos breaks out at an upstate murder scene. A News Channel 7 reporter is attacked while trying to bring you the story of an elderly man found murdered in his home in Union. The murder happened at a house on Spring Street in Union. Investigators say the 73-year-old victim's grandson beat him to death and tried to cover up the crime. Police say Michael Shane Howell admitted to killing his grandfather, saying he hit the elderly man with his fist after they got into an argument. But the story doesn't end there. Amy? That's right. News Channel 7's reporter Charmaine Brown was attacked as she covered this story. Charmaine says she was on standing on public property when a family member of the victim rushed at her, punched her in the head, and pulled her to the ground. Profanity and racial slurs are edited out of this video you're about to see. Our Jonathan Carlson has the story. A reporter trying to report the news. Then a crowd tried to stop her. The video doesn't capture the first punch on News Channel 7's Charmaine Brown. Only a woman crossing the street straight past another station's reporter, and then she starts pummeling. The attack was filmed by WYFF. News Channel 7's photographer Ty Barnes, seen in the tan jacket, was busy trying to pull Charmaine out of the angry crowd. She's in the cream-colored suit, and she's getting pulled and hit from all angles. So it was just me. And she charged across the street, punched me, pulled me to the ground, and at that point I just had to try to defend myself. But people were coming from everywhere. Charmaine and Ty were on public property when they were surrounded. See, it was an uneasy situation for the both of us trying to fight off a mob attacking us. You got to go. Uh -uh. They, got to go. No, do not. they both say they weren't welcome when they first arrived. And I knew it was already a sensitive situation, so I did not go across the street. They were continuously throwing racial slurs at us, yelling at us. She says the pain of what was said hurts more than what was done. I would think that somebody would respect what I do and allow me to do my job. And today, I was not allowed to do my job. By all accounts, she was doing it well. News Channel 7 does have policies to make sure that, uh, you know, we're respectful and that we're understanding and that we are um, courteous with how we treat people. Charmaine and Ty just wish they were afforded the same courtesy. And we weren't there harassing anybody. We were there, you know, just to find the facts. Jonathan Carlson, News Channel 7. Now we want to show you the faces of the three of the four people arrested today. Here they are, Billy Taylor, Trina Vinson, and Tasha Smith. Now Vinson is the mother of the murder suspect. Smith is the sister. All three are charged with assault and battery. As for the fourth suspect who was arrested tonight, that mugshot and name is not available yet. Well, since we first aired this story, your comments have poured into us. You've been emailing us and calling the newsroom. And the biggest question you have is, are they okay? Well, Charmaine and Ty tell us they're shaken up, but they are okay tonight. Jacqueline in Boiling Springs writes, I couldn't believe the attack on Ms. Brown. My heart goes out to her, and I hope the attackers are prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Chris writes, I think that the attack on Charmaine Brown shows us just how prejudiced this state is. With all of those women attacking her, that should be considered a lynching, and they should receive a very stiff punishment. And Kelly emailed in this, as a Caucasian female, I am so ashamed and saddened that there are still people in this fine upstate of South Carolina that are so narrow-minded as to still speak towards someone with racial slurs, especially a fine person like Charmaine and someone wor working to bring the community our news. And we've had so much response. We'll be addressing this further in our weekly Voice of the Viewer segment that runs during Thursdays during our 5.30 newscast. Also, I've blogged about this awful attack on our website, WSPA.com, and there you can post comments. Tom, back to you.